here in game three. Matthew Hoey, uh, Open Series regular Chicago area player. I believe on the top 100 of our standings, but yeah, has been a little silent on the tour in the last year, but you know, known to be playing Stoneblade and Legacy at every tournament. And we'll see right now, it looks like he is attempting to pack rat out his Bant opponent. You look at the graveyard, there's been a pair of Sign and Bloods, a Duress and a Thought Seize on Hoey's side. He's done a lot of damage. Looks like he's taken out some Dissolves in the Sphinx's Rev. Now, unlike the Bant control list we had on camera earlier, this is a control list. I mean, this is one copy of Bant Link, a ton of Planeswalkers, four Supreme Breaks in the main deck. This is like an Esper deck that plays green instead of black. Yeah, no Sylvan Carry. Sometimes he's even going Carry to you know, if you're playing so many four-mana Planeswalkers, you want to play a far seek at any cost, so they play it. But Ho Hoey doesn't. He's just, it is a blue-white control deck with Kiora. Yeah. And just got a scry land there. Looks like Aaron's in a somewhat safe spot. You never can, you always have to be careful with cards like Pack Rat. Um, it's an interesting game. So... Because if you're Hoey, you know that Aaron has detention spheres. So you don't want to just make a bunch of pack rats. But what you can do is like leave out two pack rats, allow yourself to get two for one, and then leave up six mana. So if at any point Aaron doesn't immediately detention sphere pack rats, you'd be like, well, end step makes two more, untap make two more, swing for 24. It's all about trying to apply pressure and threaten the ability to do something really but destructive. But don't spend the cards. But don't yeah. spend the cards. And a third sign in blood for Hoey. I'm actually interested. So what Hoey's done with his mono blacklist, he's playing both Night Veils and Life Banes. He's cut down to three Grey Merchants, and he's running four Sign of Blood and no Underworld Connections. No Underworld Connections is very interesting, although I guess he has a lot of three drops at this point. And I like cutting a Grey Merchant quite a bit. Yeah, he has Underworld Connections out of the sideboard. I was going to say, man, in a control matchup, no Underworld Connections. Like, as a control player, if you told me that my mono black opponent had cut all his Underworld Connections, I can't tell you how happy I am to hear that. Like, yeah. sure, give him a divination. Yeah, that's fine. But once you are de-emphasizing Grey Merchant a little bit, Underworld Connections versus Sign and Blood, because way more reasonable to play with Sign and Blood, especially when you have so many threes in your deck. My now Hoey's Curve is turn two Sign and Blood, turn three, cast a three drop. My guess is that Sign and Blood is better in every matchup that's not Revelation. Yeah, that makes sense. And I like getting away from Grey Merchant a little bit. I think it's the most overrated card in the deck by a lot. Well, the body's not very relevant. It's really, really good in the mirror match. That's the most important card in the mirror in a lot of respects, but there's a lot of matchups where it just has, it's just a piece of nonsense. It's not even the most important card in the mirror. It's like this card that wins the game, and it's like pretty good, but you know, there's still, uh, it's hard to say that one card, the mirror's a weird cookie, you know, I don't know. So it looks like these pack rats, these foil pack rats in play, Hoey is using as pack rat tokens, by the way. Okay. In some respects, I like using that better than the actual rat tokens because the rat tokens aren't super clear. Right. And the rat tokens... At least Hoey's tokens indicate the mana cost because that's confusing. And the rat tokens are Ogre Slumlord tokens. Let's be realistic here. Sure. Get a point if you immediately knew what Ogre Slumlord was. The oft-forgotten <laughs> Ogre Slumlord. Yeah, there's rats Some in that return slum. return to Ravnica, right? Gate crash. Gate crash, okay. Yeah. He's real good in draft, too. What's it? He gives your stuff death touch, and when a creature dies, you get a rat? Nice. Yeah, it's a 3-3 three, three for 5. That part's not so nice. So this is a spot where Aaron has ripped Revelation, but because Hoey's done such a good job of naviga navigating the pack rat game, he can't even tap out for Revelation. In fact, he may just have to rev for 2 and hope to find a tension sphere. Oh, that's so not where I want to be as a control player. But you're absolutely right. Hoey with 3 rats, he's got a lethal swing here. You should just aetherize the pack rats. Aetherize is pretty good against we pack rat. Yeah, we were talking about earlier how, you know, aether spouts, aether eyes, those are good. Aether effects. Well, not aetherling. Aetherling is not very good against pack rat. Right. But the other, yeah, the other ones are very good. <laughs> um, all right, so Hoey's got three here. He's threatening lethal next turn. Aaron, you said did, as you said, did draw Sphinx's Revelation, but he cannot do it for much here. He's playing three ban detention sphere, two banishing light. So he's revving for one. I guess to also potentially find Supreme Verdict, but doesn't yeah, find it. So yeah, he had the option. He can rev for two to find three two cards and three outs, or he can go one card and uh, how many Supreme Verdicts does he have? 
Four. Four. Okay, one card and seven outs. All right, all right, I'm, I'm with one. All right, I like it. You like revving for one there? Yeah, I like revving for one. 